In this presentation, we'll take a look at identification numbers related to a Schedule C business, a sole proprietorship. We're focusing in in terms of our income tax equation up top in the income tax line, remembering, however, that when we report this on the Schedule C, there is both an income component and an expense component that then rolls forward to the first page represented by this formula on the income tax line. We're focusing here in this line on the first page of the 1040, which is where the net income would typically roll into from the Schedule uh, 1, which is where would the would be reported from the Schedule C. So it goes from the Schedule C to the Schedule 1 to the first page of the Form 1040. We're now considering the identification number uh, with relation to a sole proprietorship. So identification number types, we have the Social Security number, SSN, Individual Taxpayer Identification, I-10, or the Employer Identification Number. These are basically the options you have for the sole proprietorship. So note that if you just start doing business and you start earning revenue, then you may not have any other kind of number. You don't have any other employees, you're earning revenue, then you can report that information on your Schedule C uh, with basically your Social Security number, your individual identification number. However, if you have employees, then you're required to get an EIN number in order to report that information to the IRS related to the employees. That's why it's labeled the employer identification number. However, uh, you may want an employer identification number anyways uh, if, you, if you're of a fairly decent size and you're working with other people with your business because they may request the number from you. For example, if they want to give you a 1099, if you do work for a, a business and you're a contractor, they're going to they're going to be required to, to give you a 1099 form because they're pressured to do so as the payer by the irs and in order to do that they're going to need your business number and uh it's not good to give out you don't you probably don't want to give out your social security number for that purpose and it doesn't look as professional so even if you're a sole proprietorship with no employees if you're a contractor and you're doing business for other businesses who typically need to issue a 1099, you still may want to get an employer identification number and EIN number. Fairly simple process to do that. You can go to the IRS website, irs.gov. We'll provide uh, information on that. And, it's fairly, and you could do it basically all online at this point in time. And it's probably worth doing for most, uh, you know, if you're a sole proprietorship and you have a going concern for that business. So the social security number, the SSN, generally uh, use your social security number as your taxpayer identification number. You must put this number on each, uh, each of your individual income tax forms, such as the form 1040 and its schedule. So obviously the IRS, when they think about you in terms of your normal tax returns, and they, they think of you as, as a number, obviously, and normally that number is your social security number that you report on the form 1040. To apply for an SSN, use the form SS5 application for a social security card. This form is available uh, at Social Security Administration, the SSA offices, or by calling this number 1-800-772-1213. Uh, it is also available from the SSA website, but that's at the SSA.gov. Individual taxpayer identification number, the I-10. The IRS will issue an I-10 if you are a non-resident or resident alien and you do not have uh, and are not eligible to get an SSN, a social security number, the I-10 will expire, expire for any taxpayer who does not file a federal income tax return or who is not included as a dependent on the return of another taxpayer for three consecutive years. In general, general if you need to obtain an I-10, you must attach form W-7 uh, application for IRS individual taxpayer identification number with your signed original completed tax return and any other required documentation and mail them to the address in the instructions for form W-7. Exceptions are covered in the instructions if you must include another person's SSN social security number on your return and that person does not have and cannot get an SSN enter the person's I-10. Employer identification number. So here's the real key. I mean, usually uh, you may have your individual uh, number, usually your social security number, and then you're questioning whether or not to get the EIN, which is the employer identification number, which you have to do if you have employees, and which you may want to do if you don't have employees so that you can have that number to report to others if needed for reporting purposes rather than giving the social security. 
Uh, you also must have an EIN to use as a taxpayer identification number if you do either of the following. Pay wages to one or more employees, file pension or excise tax returns. So you have to do it in those cases. If, if you don't have those cases, you may still want to do it uh, so that you have that number that you can provide to people who may need it, such as those that need to issue you possibly a Form 1099 for work that you have done for them, for which they are paying you for.